Hello, uh, good morning and good uh, afternoon to all of you who joined this today webinar. Uh, some of you are from uh, ASEAN and some of you from Australia and New Zealand, uh, three hours ahead. Uh, while COVID-19 uh, still spreading across our region, but we have to keep moving, stay safe all. And today I will be uh, giving a subject of the webinar, which is more into MQTT messaging blueprint. Well, uh, many factories today are looking into um, become a smart factory, okay? So there's nothing you can be done because you have to be keep uh, evolving, I mean, uh, yourself. But uh, to be a smart factory, you've got a lot of things to be need to be done. Like, for example, uh, maybe robotic arms, you know, SCADA, MESH, so many different systems, you know, uh, AI, uh, convergence of data. But how to make sure that all this data can be really gathered and so critical to one plant manager or the owner. I mean, it's very important. So that's why we will share about what is going to be MQTT messaging blueprint that can enable you to do so. Yeah. Well, I'm Joe Paul from Matrix Invent, Asia Pacific region. And uh, we actually uh, having the sales uh, rep in uh, different country. Uh, we are headquarters in Malaysia, but uh, we have um, sales rep in Australia, Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and Hong Kong. And we actually uh, cover the entire Asia Pacific, yeah, uh, with principles together. So our role is actually very much like a consultative um, um, distributors, where we're trying to be, uh, because every time we are uh, at the forefront with a use case with the customers and customers, and we learn from each other, from our principle from Northern America, Europe, you know, and Northern Asia. So we try to always, you know, share in what can be, it's actually inter learning together. So we try to share and, and, and exchange experience and how this become a good adoption I mean, for everyone, especially for us, you know, when adopting this technology in this region to make ourselves, uh, you know, I mean, like much more competitive. Yeah. So, okay, what is the business driver as a smart factory? You know, I mean, uh, in short, I would say um, you, you need to really squeeze the most juice from your production line. That's basically how you're going to make sure that you make a quality product, uh, ensure minimum downtime, reliable, and then efficient, okay? So you create a good product at the right cost, I mean, for the production, but that's very important. And most important, you know, I mean, like how to measure it, I mean, in order to make sure that you're actually progressing. So the business survival is, is continuous. It's a continuous process to how to make one factory smarter, much efficient, and much better, yeah? So in order to do so, a lot of people is talking about Industrial 4.0. It's a uh, in thing few years back ago until today. You have Industrial 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. So, but uh, I mean, when now you're talking about, you have already have um, robotic arms, auto, certain kind of automations. You got sensors, you know. But Industrial 4.0 is talking about how you even can converge all these things, you know, to have smart data. So when this data are moving from your plants, to, you know, I mean, entirely uh, have an overview picture of what is going to be uh, able to let you learn about your plan to improve and evolve for analysis, you know, AI machine learning, or even push some data to the cloud. Then you start to even have, um, you know, the, the concern about data securities, whether your, your, your plan data will be leaked out, you know. But you got to do this because you're going to achieve a data convergence. So Industrial 4.0 is the future of manufacturing but also in much many challenge for uh, many, you know, plant managers as well. You got brown fields versus green field. You know, I think um, that's quite exciting. I mean, uh, uh, illustration from our principal to talk about. So if you are green field, you know, it's very simple. You start up, you know, you start to, given a budget to build a plant today, you have all the free hand to do whatever you like. So it's very simple. But when you're from a brown field environment, so uh, basically is that that's also the majority of today factories when you start to build your factories in 1980s, 90s, 2000s, you know, minimum and 2010. So you tend to have over the decades built a lot of systems point by point. That's nothing wrong because you are talking about the involvement I mean, of our factories. So nothing wrong about, about it, yeah. But however, that leads to a lot of data silos because you, you input a lot of things, you know, a lot of data silos, you know, uh, to talk about point solutions that, uh, you know, different standards. And when today, when you need to do a convergence, 
IT OT crash. So we're talking about it is, it's a merging requirement, but it's also a crash. And how can these two operations and these two specialization people can sit together and make an architecture to ensure that the whole plan emerged to be within, with a combination and become a competitiveness in terms of crash. It's very difficult that you know because OT people may not may not have a lot of IT skill, and the IT people may not have a lot of OT knowledge. There's always a combination of crash in between two when the need in industrial 4.0 is to uh, as a merge. Yeah. Difficult to skill, very difficult. You know we're talking about um very difficult to skill your entire. I mean like um how how would I say the 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 plan and the production line, and you're gonna manage if there's any potential downtime. How are you going to manage that? How are you going to actually able to recover that? That become a superb challenge of a lot of manufacturers. Yeah, the silo OT system is no interrupt operability. You know, they, they can see gray color. I put it gray colors because you can see from from the device sensors, uh, mood bars. You know, I mean digital input output. You know, all these things going through some certain gateway, some PLC dialect. So it's very conventional and very normal that you will have this kind of point solution in many plant. And in, in, to a certain extent, we have experienced that. I mean, many plant told us that, Joe, we don't even have the link in between because, I mean, when you are in certain automation and certain, um, you know, operation for years, you tend to have some silo, even uh, independent production line that you need to move the data, you know, to one extent when the customer say, this has to be done in weekly basis, you know, to carry all the Excel data back to the, 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 the back office solution you know, like ERP, uh, SAP, and Oracle, and stuff like that, yeah. So it's very difficult to change the workflow and process, very difficult. We share the, 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 the view together, and it's very difficult to talk about, you know, I need to upgrade a system, I need to bring in a new software to, to help to, to modernize the plan, you know. I think I want to analyze the, 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 the plan much more effective. Again, how do you converge all this data? Because in the integrated automation environment, let's say, in the in the plan, you know, I mean that you want to achieve, you got different levels of uh, uh, messages, you know, or information need to be flow up and down and left and right. So up and down is indicating about the the time frame about you know let's say in the machine level you're talking about milliseconds. These data are coming out every time every millisecond. When you're at a control level, operational level, monitor level can be minutes, hours, you know. When it goes to management level, the data can be days and months, but that can be aggregated data together with the data that coming from the machines. So it can be also moving to the back office, you know, like um, you know, to the to the to the ERP, to the mass, to the SCADA, that eventually you can do certain kind of like intelligent analysis about your plan. Okay. Be it even you're talking about eventually going to machine learning or AI, but that is one step further when you achieve a super high smart factories level. Yeah, you need to con you know you, to do that. You need to really connect. You know, I mean, connect the day, uh, the different level of the the factory from automation area, and then to the manufacturing area, and then to the factory area, and then to the crowd. So that can be considered as operational and a system that actually control the operation of the production line until you have certain system to be for the back office in order to calculate. I mean, the production effectiveness and efficiency until if you need to be really going further up you know to share the data across plan so this intra factory but you we do have a lot of like situation and and the customer told us that hey joe and today we are not coming to any talk about one plan because we have almost about 20 factories you know around the whole asia pacific region and to do so i mean we do we can start from one plan but the ultimate architecture and advantage is that we want all plants can be connected and to look into each individual product, you know, I mean, like production or even assets, you know, to study the asset, to study the, the, the efficiency, we need the overview picture. How can you do that as well? Yeah. So that, that becomes the goal of modernization. So all the wish lists of plant manager to talk, I mean, the engineer, the owner to talk about how agile I can start to really move in more software to the factory. Sometimes it's not uh, because of uh, budget. It's not because of investment. It's how. How are you going to involve, you know, all these things? How can you, you can re-architect, I mean, the entire, uh, you know, I mean, like the, the, the plan architecture in a way you can put in any system that is much more flexible. And how can you really make sure anything down, you can bring up back again without any downtime for the production uh, activities. And how can you actually having, you know, like um, uh, uh, a tablet and an uh, iPhone 
or the Android phone, just walk through a coffee bean, you know, Starbucks coffee, and then you can just take out your phone and look into the plant operation efficiency a dashboard, you know, and control it even if you like to from outside and remove the factory. And that really, you know, need a consistent and flexible software architecture in the plant. So I, I guess this is a fish wish list, I mean, for many uh, plant managers today, yeah, to achieve um, smart factories. So ideally, you've got things like, you know, factory IoT bus, you know, okay, well, I mean, IoT, industrial IoT. So uh, let's forget about MQTT first, you know. I mean, this is more into like, if I can have a bus, if I can have a post office that handling all the standard messaging across the entire plant, so how good it is. I can move anything up and down, left and right, so I can really start to have a control of all the data in my plan. Yeah. So, but technically challenge is a lot, you know, because you're talking about uh, how can I really ensure reliable bi-directional. It's very important. You know, how can you really make sure that all, all these things is not is not disconnected? Because in, in, in many plan setup, sometimes it can be in a remote area. Uh, it can be really, you know, even oil and gas can be in, in offshore, you know, in some plant in the in the in the oil palm area, and some can be very far away if you are chemical because you're not allowed in the city. Okay, so that's one of the key things. The the network be lucky or not is still real unreliable. Then you got consistent data messaging across all area. You know, in some situation, our customer even uh, share with us that you know in the plant itself, we actually using Bluetooth due to the you know the wiring problems. So and then the blocking, we use Bluetooth to actually transfer the data. But yet we have challenges of the data packet is can be lost and not reliable. And how can we be secure? The secure is very important because today when you talk about IoT even IoT at home. So when you install so many sensors, you know, cameras and, 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 and things in your home, you're really afraid that people will come across, you know, and scan your data and understand what you're doing now. The same thing to a plant, which is much even need to be highly confidential, that your data can be scanned and captured if you're not secure. And how do you deal with that? And eventually, most important, lots of different hardware suppliers, you know, we are talking about because of brownfield operation for years and decades, you know, well, now you have a new things on hand. I mean, if you've got new technology they want to bring in, it's so difficult because each other are not talking. So everyone is not talking to each other. I mean, you're talking into Indonesian, uh, Mandarin, uh, you know, I mean, like um, maybe uh, Takara, you know, I mean, even Thai. But if you, everyone can speak English, that would be the ideal situation. So that's the technical challenge of all plan today. Then here goes what is MQTT. I think a lot of people will understand that. I won't go very detailed about how it, uh, you know, about it's the birth, I mean, time and how it goes. But it's actually an IoT messaging protocol to make it very simple. Very simple, you can understand the, the structure is how it publish and subscribe, you know, in terms of commercial angle. You know. uh, someone that have to send an envelope to you and then you the postman deliver to you and you get the, the, the letter. So, but it is required very minimum bandwidth, not a lot. And most important, you're talking about it is very reliable over unreliable channels. So it's designed for that. So we just talk about, you know, in a plant when you're doing Bluetooth or you're in a remote area, you time to time got a lot of challenges about the data connection. But it is designed for that. It is designed for that because it has um, the, the concept to talk about the quality of service, you know, how you want to choose what kind of data you want to ensure how and eventually to grab the data until you can move on to the next step. So it is something that uh, the evolvement has been in the market for some time. And you're talking about now is MQTT5. It's uh, actually best designed for IoT. Yeah. So we, we represent Hive MQ brokers, you know, I mean, in this region. So we are the, the partner. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of uh, MQTT broker, but Hive MQ is one of the uh, very strong commercial brokers in the region, they also have a free version. You have to do clustering. You have to do, uh, you know, scalability. You have to do throughput of the connection. You have to do securities. You know, I will explain further on that. And it's something that to talk about, if you want to start from uh, using the MQTT broker to help to become a post office, and Hive MQ is something that has spent years of R&D and years of excellent use case, successful use case in the market that you can really count on them. So they are from German and Hive MQ. I mean, uh, some of my kids say that, you know, it's a B system, but I, I think it's a very uh, uh, 
a smart and an attractive a logo in a way hive mq if you look into this it's very simple to understand again to talk about your sensors when you publish you know to the mqtt broker mqtt broker will be like a post office to really send back to anyone who like to subscribe to this information and they will also handling all the i mean like uh, unreliability to wait to resend to do whatever it's supposed to be hands off Okay, now you got a very good post office, I mean, that in your plan, if you have this architecture. So connecting the factory, I mean, we just talked about, you know, I mean, the level one to level two. From level one to level two, bi-directional, how can you send here, come here, you know, go and receive, you know, to both way. And it got to be light. It like to be light. It got to be also, if it become a, like a protocol, it's a standard, you know, in the future. Can it be really standard? And today, all the PLC actually start to move in to support MQTT. That used to be OPC alone, okay? And now most MES, you know, I mean, also support MQTT. And you got SCADA. Well, I think uh, it becoming, it kind of becoming, I would say, a standard protocol, just like you got barcode and you got QR code. Uh, you 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 leave it to the, the choice of the factory that you have to adopt this in the future, okay? From level one to level two to level three, and instead of just only connecting in between the SCADA and MSF for the production, and you can start to even talk about can we even have certain data once in all, you know, I mean, to design the blueprint to really push some of the data into the back office ERP, okay, to talk about the cost of production. You know, we have um, uh, one of the experience before the plan to talk about, hey, Joe, I need this data is because we need, uh, we are practicing just in time. So in a way, the materials that use in the production, I need it to be very fast to be updated so that I can reorder immediately from the back office. That is one of the goal for just in time. I mean, the, the practice and just in time. So that's very key, important. And imagine if you have this kind of data connection in between one to two and three to four, you're almost talking about even you can move up the same thing to four, level four, to share the crowd, to be regional, studying all the factories' data and all in one standard messaging platform. So that, that is MQTT is able to do today. Yeah. So I, I would say, I mean, um, uh, uh, we forget about technical, uh, um, I mean, like um, uh, understanding about it, but just think about if now, if I can really let everyone to speak English in my in my plan, so everyone will start to be easy to start to move on to really share information, and that really help a lot for many car, you know, I mean, the factories and plan manager one step closer to smart factories, yeah. And in the case of interfactory, so you can do the same thing as well when you can really have to kind of like you know the the MQTT signal to cluster cluster and and move and combine together. That's what Hive MQ can 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 do for you in a way. And today we had like we just discussed about when start to have data to flow out how would you able to really ensure reliable how really really ensure that it will be secure that no one will be able to capture your data and to use it freely that's the key number one i mean like um i, I would say the requirement when you want to consider to be interfactory connectivity yeah so high reality is that i mean we are talking about even uh, we have one use case, you know, for one of our customers and say that, you know, in the case of, let's say, if I got factory one, if I'm going to update my uh, MQTT brokers, what will happen? So in many instances today, if you're not able to do the clustering, the situation will be like something that you are not, you have to shut down the production line for possibly 10 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do the update. But in this kind of scenario, Hive MQ is also designed in a way to talk about while you're updating anything MQTT broker, I mean, like solution architecture in your plan one. So you can move plan two to really support plan one without shutting down anything to like a mirror, like a standby. Until when plan one recover, then you can go back again. That makes the weather look very huge and success in terms of overcome the barrier of deploying interfactory connectivity by clustering from Hive MQ. Yeah. So, but there's still challenges, you know, because still challenges to talk about, you know, I mean, you still got a lot of devices, endpoint, you know, I mean, different topics, you know, I'm talking about um, those that devices in speaking different language, again, still even MQTT, that you may still have a, how do you speak the dialect, I would say the dialect of it, uh, uh, the accents, and there goes Spark Plug B. So today, I mean, uh, MQ, Spark Plug B has been, uh, you know, drafted in a way to support the IOT industrial development where you're talking about, I mean, I do not worry about anyone in the future who design what kind of device 
from any country, any manufacturing, and all will confine to one standard, you know, um, topic, name space, data model structures, you know, extend, extensive process, variable player load, so that, I mean, both sides can easily start to integrate, use, and capture the data uh, that require. So that's something that is, is, is uh, moving ahead in this uh, space. And with the MQTT architecture, you can look at this very clean from the point solution that we talk about a lot of data silos. You know. Now you can be easily put in MQTT brokers to look in a very clean and flexible and agile way of the, the, you know, the, the, the smart factory architecture in the future. So you can plug in any new device, new system that confine to the standard that you like, unplug if you do not want to, and it's no longer something that very depend depending uh, to each other. So uh, a key messaging, I would say blueprint that you may can consider to really moving forward to achieve a smart factory. When you talk about even, you know, I mean like uh, spark plug unable, you do not need to change anything. Same MQTT broker and have MQ supported spark plug B. And in a way you're talking about all system that able to really uh, you know, I mean, speak the same accent and dialect without any problem. And that is a crucial, I, I would say, I mean, today, even when you talk about uh, to select the right uh, MQTT broker in the market and which one will keep on providing you the security enhancement, uh, you know, like the back office extension and maybe even the, you know, like Spark Plug B, anything that new in the industry that you confine, that you develop, I mean, to make yourself, make the plan even evolve faster in compared to competition. So that is how how MQTT uh, um, Hive MQ works. You know the messaging structure work. It worked in many industry. You know connected car and mobility. I think they have a lot of use case, more than one hundred fifty use case. You know large industry, uh, and then it can be uh, the cool things about in manufacturing, industrial automation. Now you are in transport and logistic. One of the uh, you know one of the largest um, food delivery. And, and, and e healing companies in Latin America is also their customers now, okay? And then you have connected assets and, and, and products in utilities. So these are the key industry that using uh, MQTT um, um, from Hive MQ. And you'll be amazed that even some kind of like uh, electronics industry from Germany that talk about the washing machine, they are also using MQTT to actually do some self-reporting and control back to the, the system the service provider in order to understand which component and which electrical products need to be fixed and maintained. So that's, that's a lot of use case that you can really go to the website and take a look from there. Okay, one of the key thing is the, the BMW. I think one of the, the use cases talk about, well, I think the, it's common that if you drive this car that you know that uh, in many countries, they tend to use SMS to control the car engine lock and sometimes even they have a SIM card to, to, to call back to the call center agent and, and stuff like that. It depends on region. But I mean, you can really uh, understand the car if anything needs to be maintained, anything needs to be to, to be, to be uh, like um, uh, looted, you know, and put attention on to the car, the safety. You can switch on the air con, you can switch or uh, open the door. So via SMS, in fact, is one of the very good methods during that time. But now you're talking about is something that if designed the small data packet, it can help to even much more efficient to control the messaging, to this to talk to the machines and the sensors. So that's how why Hive MQ are coming into space. I mean that a lot of people are using it uh, as MQTT uh, brokers. Yeah. Well, I have another use case, but I think it's not displaying. But anyway, so lots of data. I like particularly this screen. So you got lots of data from well, after you have a blueprint on that. But how do you capture all this data? That's why we do have another solution to pair with uh, your MQTT broken blueprint. Okay. So what you do do all, all the data? You need to store everything. Okay, in the plan that you may got the SCADA, you may got you may got the MES, but somehow you may still need to keep and maintain this raw data for more than six months to 12 months to two years or three years and four years. The wishes of engineers to store all this data, okay? Anytime I want to pull back the data is also possible, you know, be it one year, two years, or even 10 years ago. So it can be open access that I can open up to anyone for the IT to open up anyone for the manage, management level, you know, to operational level, departmental level people to see what they're supposed to see. 
And how do we actually interpret this machine data is also one thing. Because MQTT broker will be able to help you to, to have a very good blueprint to transform the data, make everything flexible into the space that you need, but you still have the machine data, uh, you know, I mean the context. And how do you interpret it is also one of the key things. Okay. In here, we do have a, a partner called Canary. Is doing a historian for the market for more than 30 years. We help you to get all this data and start to maximize the use of the data. Okay. But how easy to use the process data, you know, do any automatic workflow that you require, and then you can really enjoy to unleash all the potential of your data. So that, that's how they call it. I mean, the data historian for your process data and sensors IoT device. It's a good pairing of in between uh, Hive MQ and Canary. And now, is talk about collecting your data. So when you do the collections, you know, MQTT Canary also support MQTT Spark Plug B. Being said so that when, when Hive MQ, uh, you know, subscribe to the sensors of the data, it will help you can transfer, transmit very, uh, you know, effectively to Canary easily. But it can also speak to other, other sources if you require, like OPC, UNDA, uh, SCADA system, SQL database, CSV files, and web.net. The clean side is always you can stock speak to a, a M MQTT broker. But in a way, I think all of you uh, that you know that in your plan, you may already got certain years of data or already certain point solution may not be immediately able to connect back into MQTT. And that also gives you a flexibility to consider using Canary Historian because they come with a collector that able to connect to any formats that's required, okay, to come back. But they are historian, they do not manage blocking office, like a post office to deliver a message for you. They're just only receiving, okay? When they receive, and then they're becoming a very powerful database, time series database that can store years of data, okay? So you go, you know, MQTT the architecture is like the PLC, go to MQTT broker, Canary, and I will just go fast from here, you know, to talk about how you can even manage the catch, you know, if anything goes wrong, and re-start uh, the connection to move the data in the cache for you to backfill all the data very, uh, you know, automatically without any problems. And you're talking about if you are operator, this is very interesting because you're talking about uh, many many of our customers is come sometimes can be the operator. So I'm a I'm a I'm a utilities operator. I'm not the owners themselves, but the owners would like to see the data. So how do you achieve a multi-tenant environment to using the same systems, you know, to be for different sites? or even one site, how can you actually can be able to really segregate the data for different people who need to view and who have the authority to view all this sensitive data. So it's all taken care for you and very simple, get all the raw data and how to present to them. No SQL time series database. I mean, uh, no SQL. I mean, it's something that you do not need to really use, um, uh, you know, the skill of DBA maintenance, very important. Like we just mentioned that when IT and OT is crashing, so uh, if everything packaged and out of the box, isn't it better? You know, so it is optimized for process data and performance. It can really store years of raw data and manipulate on it without any loss of data. That's very important. And no, most important, no DBA skill set required to maintain the system at all. Yeah, scalable. So from 100 text, you know, very small, can be up to million text, you know, and then it can be, um, how flexible that you want to do to do the lodging for mirror. So this can be very, very um, uh, uh, like um, interesting when you, well, at one hand, I'm talking to Hive MQ to collect data. Will you be able to still having a different collector to collect data from different uh, sources? So you can lodge from different area, which is not in your smart factory environment to really become a data convergence. It can really achieve this door logging or to even to talk about because Hive MQ, MQTT broker, never store data they are broken of data and then if you need to when they come to canary how it can even help you to mirror this important data to another area it's like a contingency planning easily without any hype of it very easily then to talk about you know i mean like this architecture to putting multiple sites two sites three sites four sites is all very simple and and the most important is very very much uh, justify and affordable to even set up this kind of like, uh, you know, I mean, like contingency data backup in compared to the using the the, in the IT ways, you know, to really buy all this like, like, like software to back it up. The system itself already catered for it and easy for you to transmit, copy, mirror data anytime that you wanted to. 
So what is a tag? I think I will just, uh, uh, this one is more to like really standard for all plant manager, you know, that from a census, you've got a timestamp, you've got a value, you've got quality, you've got a metadata of, uh, you know, metadata uh, properties, you know. So the important is that Canary can be really help you to do lossless compression algorithm. So that is why we are talking about when you have 20 years of data and when you want to pull that up, how difficult is it? In fact, um, almost all our customers in this area to talk about, even when you want to pull something 10 years and 15 years or 20 years ago, it can be just in seconds. There's no problem about, I mean, like, like you need to be uh, decrypt it first, you know, or maybe you have to be like, like, um, like uh, decompress it first again to ensure that you got all the data is very fast in seconds. You do not have to worry about the data storage anymore because every time you deploy, I mean, um, Canary Historian, they have a very best in class, their own uh, compression technology that can really, you know, in one TB so far, uh, though there is a calculation, but we did not have any problem that all of our customer can store, you know, I mean, 20,000, 30,000 text of data for five to 10 years with today servers and storage capacity, which is the hardware is even now over capacity, over perform to the software. Yeah. Out of the box, very easy, no data loss, you know, a database that you can count on. And then most important that how you're going to assign those important uh, uh, views on the, the, the production line data. Like we just say that you've got the production data when it comes to you, it's representing technically, if you got one or two production lines, it's simple. But when you've got 10, 20 of production line, that becomes starting to be a problem. So if you've got one scatter, no problem, easy to redefine the few, but you've got five scatter from different system, MES different system, different evolution from different factories when the brokers come back to you, you still got all this context of data in machine and maybe a, a very technical field. So what it can help you is that can to let you redefine, I mean, uh, the, 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 the asset view to give you, I mean, an, uh, a client have a better understanding about using uh, you no know, important, like uh, the meaningful data instead of this O02 flood JT 01 PV that become a line filter from power one. So that's something that is very simple to, uh, to assign on it, okay? And you're talking about, you can even uh, build asset model to group it, you know, because sometimes you may have some asset, the boiler, fueler, in different production line, but how do you actually, on one hand, you want to group all this data to analyze, you know, how this, I mean, like um, a boilers performs, how these fuelers are performing. So that is something that it can also help to even sit on top of different SCADA, sit on top of different MES, you know, um, any system to have a convergence after getting all the data back to the historian and start to be really even build an asset model to understand all your asset in your production line. Yeah, very simple. So after that, we talk about a calculation engine. And just like driving a car, you know, you've got raw data. Raw data is that you're driving the speed of 40. And then um, when every time you start a car, condition based, whether the sensors work or not work, same thing. And calculated KPI, you know, this is the, the, the thing about is aggregated text, you know, to talk about if you have, if you're driving uh, the speed of 40 with this much of the, the fuel left in the tank, how far can you go further? So that become, a, you know, like an aggregated calculated text, very important, especially in a plant that you have all these census data, but eventually it is not meaningful to you. If you do not put in your scientific or commercial calculation into it, what does it mean to you? And the most important is the consultative experience that what will happen to this data when you put a calculation on top. So that is important that where Canary can help you to do so, to even to talk about putting all this calculation engine, you know, that you can really make your data much more meaningful to even further transport to the people, to the system who need it, be it back office or to the management. Okay. So the real time, uh, the, 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 it is running in real time, you know, while back filing, meaning that even you want to look into a calculated or aggregated data, you're talking about real time. So no missing. You can straight away look into whatever that few A, few B, few C, tag tree with, with average per hour, what is the performance? And you can real time to see the graph as well. So you can always like average temperature per hour for boilers, you know, the percents of rejected bottles and water main, these all things become much more meaningful after the calculation engine. But you can further to add event monitoring on top of that. That is what if, if certain happen, okay? You're talking about, let's say if um, uh, maybe, uh, uh, for example, if the pump, the PSI have achieved 
all the pumps in production line have more than uh, more than 500 or 200 PSI. So what do you do next? Okay. So do you want to do a report monitoring? Or do you want to do a notification? And to some extent, do you want to send an action trigger to SCADA to ask them to, to start to take an action? Or if without a SCADA, do you want to direct to interact to, to do something like that? Though we don't encourage, but you have the functionality of it to build on top of the system. Okay, so that's that's important. And event trigger can be even, you know, I mean, much more complicated to give a data, you know, what, what happened during the event. So what do you want to do besides notify? Do you want to log the data? Do you want to even further to talk about, to add in certain other calculation? So play around with the system that we know that how powerful is it for especially, you know, I mean, the engineers. If you want to put on top of a lot of this, like uh, scientific calculations on for the for the plan, and for the managers and for the, the, the CEO, CFO, when you want to put your commercial calculation even, you know, into this machine data and how it helps you to really make the plan become smarter when you can evolve having all this data convergence. So that's very important. So eventually you're talking about uh, maximizing all this data, you know, trending, dashboarding and reporting. And uh, it can help you to build everything in one time, you know, that you can really... Uh, you know, flexibly skew it and 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 fit into different screen like your iPhone, your tablet, that when you wanted to, and it's designed for self service. That in 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 the future, when a smart factory is talking about, you have know, all the data can be converged, and how you're going to make a trigger a smart action on top of it. So that's how Canary can be worked closely with you know even uh, you know I mean like the 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 level two of uh, mass and also for. SCADA until the ERP system for corporate uh, financial calculation, uh, warehouse calculation, and until even some power BI behind to do a convergence of final you know, business intelligence in between the relational data from the business and also the, the, you know, I mean, the data from the machines. So that's become a convergence between IT and OT. Yeah. So you look at this diagram is that, you know, I mean, using Canary, you can very simple in one minute to drag and build this dashboard if you want. One of the good things about it is just not just only like the data calculation, but it can be visual, how it can help you to visually using tools to build all this data uh, in minutes, you know, in a way. So you can even have something like this, you know, to have a donut ring, you know, together to even much more complicated. Well, I mean, uh, Canary and when, when Hive always say that they can build this in in minutes, but I think for me, it's a bit about hours. I always in a joke because I do not have the artistic uh, DNA of my, in, in me. But it's very simple if you use it, but I really think that many engineers can do so. And you can even further to, to, to do this and with their tools, they have a lot of things, the bar, you know, I mean, the, 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 the objects can be drag and drop to build the entire things, the dashboard based on what you wanted to, okay? So this is even a food factory in a donut, I mean, a donut factory who using Canary to have all this data to build uh, the management information. You know, there's a wind farm utilities to talk about, you know, you can you can grab the, the, the map, you know, to look into the wind farm, the performance of it. You can go into level two, level three and level four. Yeah. And this is the one of the, the, the best uh, dashboard that I like. Basically, they're talking about, uh, you know, warehouse environment today, so much e-commerce. Just think about the, the, the imagine the, the the capability of today. So using this dashboard, you can even go into the the, the warehouse to put in uh, CCTV. You can do an online streaming. You can add it on on top of the of your dashboard. If anything goes wrong, the humidity is going to be too high, or is the fire catch up? We will be able to strictly away, look into it, the situation and give constructive decision on that. So with this, you are able to do so because you have all the commercial of data of the operations in your plant, or warehouse, or even on the utilities or in the in the in the guest uh, 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 operation and and drilling. I mean, of the oil uh, area, everything you can is so easy. And imagine that it is not only uh, it, it is independent, just like MQTT brokers of Hive MQ grabs the data from different independent components and pull the data all independently to converge into Canary and build a dashboard of information that you require so that what you want to do next. So that's something that sits very on top, on top that uh, that you, you can have in your organization. I, I believe um, it's a crucial thing, you know, really for many smart factories in the uh, future to come 
because uh, beside of the industrial automation, uh, the, the robotics arm, uh, SCADA system to make uh, the, the manufacturing, manufacturing execution systems that you have, you know, to all these things to make the, the plant efficient. But at the same time, without all this data convergence, you are nowhere to understand. So with data convergence today and, and uh, to transport in, in between, you know, time series data with relation, uh, relation, relational database, you know, uh, the, the, the operation of business outside from your plan, then you're going to make yourself even much more powerful. This, I mean, this is definitely the ultimate objective of all smart factories that have a convergence in between IT and OT to convergence between production to business, business uh, uh, data and, and eventually the plant manager to really make the plant smarter, effective, produce the, the right product, uh, squeeze the max performance from the production line, maintain the healthy, the quality, consistent, uh, both machine and the end product, okay? And eventually safely and secure within the boundary. Yeah. So that's all uh, for today. I mean, uh, our web reader, we hope we can bring more uh, 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 information sharing in the future. If you need any of this information, you can free to go to our partner sites, you know, like hivemq.com to look into their, their use case. Uh, I, uh, I definitely suggest that. Even Canary Labs, and in you, they are all passionate people that you can ask questions, uh, they will help you to do so. No obligation, and, and then uh, you can even talk to us as well in this time zone, because we are not just only uh, distributing, but we're also helping them to support, to be up the level one support in the region in the case of a different time zone, uh, uh, need some urgent attention. So email me if you do not have any question and let me know if you have any question on that. Okay. So I uh, I just open to the floor if any question, one to two minutes. Now you can always um, um, email me if you got any more question, but now uh, quite quiet to all the, the participants. So let me know if you've got more things, uh, uh, any any information that require us to help uh, to provide. And if you need any uh, uh, salesperson to attend to you in different region, uh, please do let me know. Uh, okay, have a good day, stay safe and um, good weekend ahead. Bye-bye.